morning, everybody, and we're glad to welcome our live stream folks in. And again, thank you for the ones that are here this morning. But, uh, as we get into service this morning, continuing on toward Easter, I think counting today is, is that three more weeks. I think we're getting really close here forward uh, to getting into Easter. But uh, to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ, but before that, there was a crucifixion. And you know, Jesus was telling his disciples regularly to get prepared. You know, I think he tells us to get prepared for things, but we're going to look look into the subject this morning. Just are you listening? You know, are you listening this morning to what the Word of God says? Are you listening to what the preached Word says? Uh, are you listening to what the Lord's saying to you? You know, are you listening? Are you seeing the signs all around us that? You know, the Lord's soon coming back. Are we listening to what's going on? Things, and, and, and you hear a lot of conversations, and, and you, uh, this thought just come to me, but there's conversations you've had and people are saying something, but you can see there's a lot of things that more behind what's being said than what you see. And, and that's the thing right now. We see a lot of things on TV and on the news and on different uh, things that's, that's going on around the world. You hear a lot of stuff being said. And, but what's behind that is end time prophecy being fulfilled that we're not, you know, these people don't know anything about it. So we're seeing it. But as we see it and as we hear it, are we understanding it? You know, it's not just listening to it, but are we understanding it? I've been... I've been in situations and, and, and in crisis throughout the years, and you know different things. And I've had people stand in front of me and they talk and they talk and they talk, and I don't understand anything they're saying. It, it never, I never comprehend. I had a, con- a conversation, and, I, and I'm not saying this derogatory, but uh, even this gentleman, he, he was talking to me. And we, we were talking about maps, and we were talking, and I kept asking questions, and asking questions, and, and he finally said he did. Uh, I'll put it this way. He said, I might as well be talking a foreign language. Well, I'm sitting there thinking, yeah, you might as well because I don't understand anything you're saying. So if we don't make it plain, we don't understand it, we need to start asking questions. We start, need to start digging into God's Word and see what God's saying to us and what He's speaking to us and, and listen to what God's saying. All right, so have you ever, have you ever thought... I wish I was like the people in the Bible, man. If I had just walked with Christ, I would have had all the understanding. I would have known everything that was going on. I would have knew exactly what was taking place. Well, is that really so? Because these guys that followed Christ, the 12 uh, disciples, they were human beings, just like me and you. If you read the story of them, they were not some uh, super spiritual person. They were fishermen. They were tax collectors. So he was having to teach them as he went through. You know, and there were times in the scriptures all throughout the Bible says, uh, if you've got an ear, listen and hear what the Spirit's saying to the church. But also, when they were with Christ, they had to listen and pay attention. And he had to stop many times and say, okay, let me explain it to you this way. Here's a parable. And he would, he would lay it out and tell them what it meant. Sometimes he would tell parables. He would have to take them aside. Here's what the parable meant. So he had to continue, continue to explain, but they had to listen and pay attention. So if I could have listened to Jesus in person, would I have really understood everything? Would I, even though I was listening to him and what he was saying, what about if I have understood it all? If I had walked with him like the disciples, uh, uh, would I have really heard what he was saying? Because we have conversations all the time, but we don't really hear what's being said, or we don't really understand what's going on. But today we're going to begin to uh, look at some things here that Jesus told his disciples and how it ended up with them, even though he told them multiple times. And I've got a lot of scripture this morning, so, so bear with me there. But we're going to begin in the book of John, chapter 2, and verse 19. It says, Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. So Jesus makes this statement here. And, you know, of course, they get all blown out, of, blown out of shape here. And uh, it says, Then the Jews said, it's taken 46 years to build this temple. And he will raise it up in three days. But he was speaking of his body, but they did not. They were listening, but they were not hearing. They were not comprehending what Jesus was saying to them. So the book of John tells us about the Pharisee named Nicodemus. And it's, a, it's a famous, if you've been in church, it's a story that's been told multiple times in church. But he came to Jesus 
to talk to him. And remember what we talked about last week. The Pharisees were very, very devout religious people. So they knew the Old Testament. And they knew all about it. Well, John chapter 3, starting verse 1 and 2, says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, the ruler of the Jews. And this man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. So they realized that, even though they wanted to kill him, they still realized where he came from. All right, for no one can do these signs uh, that you do unless God is with you. All right, verse 3 says, Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, unless uh, one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So the guy's telling Jesus, okay, we see you doing these miracles, and you knew, we know that you have to be from God to be able to do all these miracles. And Jesus turns right around and just makes a statement to him. He don't say, yes, you're right. He don't say, uh, well, I thank you for thinking that. He don't say any of those kind of things. But he says, he turns right to him, and he says, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. All right, so this is very familiar, and as they continue the conversation about being born again, we see Nicodemus had not been listening as he studied the scriptures. So let's go to verse 9. Verse 9 and 10 says, Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? And here again, Jesus comes right back with him with another question. He said, Jesus answered and said to him, Are you, a t- are you the teacher of Israel, and you do not know these things? So they've been studying the scripture for all their life. That's, that's pretty much what they, they set out, and that's all they did because they were very devout religious people. They studied the scripture, but they did not listen to what the scripture was saying. They did not hear what God was speaking to them, even to the Old Testament. i got to tell this story that just bragging just a little bit on the grandson. You know how grandparents are, so just bear with me just a minute. But little, uh, our little grandson, Randy, he'll be three years old in June. And uh, he got, you know, and of course we uh, pour into him all we can, the parents do. And, and he comes to church, but he's got a little old kid's Bible. And he was sitting, uh, Morgan videoed him the other day, and he was, uh, he was flipping through that kid's Bible. And every page he turned, he said, Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. You know, and, and this little kid is getting this. Jesus loves him. He knows that's what's in the Bible. But that is the Bible. From Genesis 1 to the end of Revelations, it's all about how much Jesus loves us. That's what it's all about if we're listening. He's listening. A lot of times we're not listening. We're not paying attention. But he's listening even at a young age. All right, so we go on. So as many, as many of us do in the church, we read our Bible, we listen to the preachers, we listen to the teachers, but are we really hearing, are we listening, listening, as we uh, go through these things? You know, there's an act of listening, there's talking, and then there's listening, and there's absorbing things. Sometimes we don't absorb. All right, but here's what I want us to focus on today. Uh, if we, if we go to the book of John, chapter 3, and verse 14 and 15, it says, and Mo- As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So Jesus is telling them, here's what's coming, guys. You need to pay attention. So as we continue toward Easter and the celebration of the resurrections, we sometimes think that we are the only ones that know or didn't understand these things. You know, why did God choose this way? Why did all these things happen? But uh, I will say that sometimes it's hard uh, for me to understand why God loved us that much. If you really are honest with yourself, you go look in the mirror and you say, God, why did you love me enough to send your son to die on the cross? It's hard for me to understand, even though I'm listening to it and I've heard it and I've studied it and I've read it. Sometimes it's still hard for me, for me to believe that the God that created the universe would love me that much that he would send his son to die on the cross in my place. But it's look at what others uh, were saying that weren't listening and were saying about him. Jesus predicts his departure. All right, he tells the Jews, he tells the disciples, but none of them are listening. They're not paying any attention. They're hearing what he says, but they're not paying any attention. Just go to John chapter 8. Verse 21 and 23 says, Then Jesus said to them, again, and we're going to see this multiple times, I am going away, and you will seek me, and will die in your sin. Where I go, you cannot come. So the Jews said, Will he kill himself? Because he, uh, because he says, Where I go, you cannot come. So they're asking this question. Verse 23 and 24, He said to them, 
you are from beneath, I'm from above. So he's telling them, I'm from heaven. You're from here on earth. All right, but you are of this world, and I am not of this world. Therefore, I said to you that you will die in your sins if you do not believe that I am he. You will die in your sins. So he's telling them, if you don't believe on me, I don't care how devout religious you are. If you don't believe in me and accept me as your Lord and Savior, you're going to die in your sins. So uh, verse 25 and 26 says, And they said to him, or then they said to him, Who are you? Jesus said to them, Just what I have been saying to you from the beginning. I have many things to say and to judge concerning you, but he who sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I heard from him. So when uh, God the Father was speaking to Jesus, he was listening. He was paying attention. All right, so verse 27 28 says, They did not understand that he spoke to them of the Father or God. All right, then Jesus said to them, When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am He, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father taught me, I speak these things. All right, let's jump down to John chapter 12, verse 27 and 28. It says, Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this purpose I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Verse 29, Therefore the people who stood by and heard it said that it thundered. So though God was speaking directly to Jesus, they couldn't hear what was actually being said, so they thought it thundered. But others said an angel had spoken to him. And Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come because of me, it come because of you. So he was telling them, God didn't speak it just for me, but he spoke it so you would hear it, or you would hear that God was talking. All right, so verse 31 says, Now this is the judgment of the world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out, and I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. Then he said, This he said, signifying of what death he would die. So he's telling them when he gets lifted up on the cross, he would draw all people into him. All right, and signifying that he would die on that cross. So let's look at the book of Matthew here in just a minute. Peter has just stated that Jesus is the Christ. It's a very famous passage of Scripture. When Jesus said, Who do you say that I am? Peter said, You are the Christ. You are the, you are the Messiah. So Jesus explained that God the Father had revealed this to him. So Peter is having a spiritual moment, but things quickly change as we see. So verse 16 in Matthew 21, uh, chapter 16, verse 21, says, From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and raised the third day. Verse 22, then Peter took him aside. Peter, come over here, buddy. I know what you just said, that they're going to take you to Jerusalem and kill you. But come over here, let me talk to you just a minute. So Peter gets over there. You know, Peter was close to Christ. He was one of the three that was with Christ the majority of the time. So he says, far be it from you, Lord. This thing shall not happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Now he's not telling Peter he's exactly Satan, but what Peter was speaking to him was not coming from God, it was coming from the enemy. And not that Peter was not demon possessed, none of those kinds of things, but what he was speaking was not from God. So he says, Get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but of the things of men. So it almost appeared like uh, Peter went, uh, went from Christ uh, being revealed to him to the letting of the thoughts of Satan. And you tell me you have perfect thoughts all the time. Every thought you have, it runs through your mind. And everything you speak out of your mouth comes from God. I would say I can talk to anybody close to you and say, that ain't happening. That ain't happening. So, so we make statements a lot of times that has nothing to do with godly things. You know, uh, we get mad and we say things we shouldn't say. We, you know, we, we make statements we shouldn't say. But that's why Jesus, or the scripture, I don't know if Jesus directly said, he says, let your speech be yes and no. That way you don't get in a lot of trouble. You know, but we will not elaborate to give our opinion on, on things that probably we shouldn't sometimes. But Peter wasn't listening, and neither was the other disciples. And again, Jesus predicts his death and resurrection. And, and like I said, this happened multiple times. Let's go to Matthew chapter 17, verse 22 and 23. It says, now, now while they were staying in Galilee, Jesus said to them, 
the son of a man, son of man, is about to be betrayed into the hands of men. So he's telling me it's coming. It's coming real quick. And they will kill him. And the third day he will be raised. And they were exceedingly sorrowful. So they paid attention that time. And Jesus tells them again in the book of Matthew about his coming to death and resurrection in verse chapter 20, verse 17. It says, Now Jesus, going up to Jerusalem, took the twelve disciples aside on the road and said to them, right, uh, So we see that Jesus wasn't, wasn't just making conversation. They're going and they're, they're everywhere. Jesus went to the crowd following so he takes them aside. He says, hey, you guys, you guys come over here just like Peter had the private conversation. And he pulls his disciples over and says, come over here just a minute. I want to talk to you. So he stops and took them aside and made a point to tell them. But were they listening? So verse 18 and 19 he says, behold, he's telling them, we are going up to Jerusalem. We are going. We're all going. And the Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priests and the scribes. And they will condemn him to death and deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and to scourge him and to crucify. And the third day he will raise again. So one more time in Matthew, Jesus tells, tells them what's coming in 26 and 2. He says, you now, you know that after two days the is the Passover and the Son of Man will be delivered up to be crucified. So he's telling them over and over and over, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. This is why I came. This is part of God's plan. I'm doing what the Father told me. He keeps telling them. So why should we listen? Why should we pay attention? Does it really matter that we pay attention? I think it matters a whole lot. So as we, we've seen Jesus predicting many times about his death and, re and resurrection, trying to prepare his followers for what was to come, but after his prediction in Matthew 26 and 2, things started happening on warp speed. If you read in the Bible, now they could have been a lot of span of time. <laughs> That's not necessarily in Scripture. But it started here. He goes to the Garden of Praise. Judas comes and gives him a kiss on the cheek. And he, and he turns him over to the, those guys. Uh, Peter uh, cuts the guard's ear off. Jesus gives it back. They take Jesus before the, the St. Peter and start doing all these false accusations. And I mean, it's like, wow, it's a whirlwind. Warp speed that everything starts happening. The Jews begin their final plot and, 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 and follow through with it. And all this happened very quickly. If you read in Scripture and the timeline, the way the Scripture lays it out. <clears throat> so I've heard it said many times that I will follow Jesus after the rapture. You ever had anybody tell you that? I mean, uh, I'll follow him after the rapture. If you can't follow Jesus today while well, we have the freedom to follow Jesus without the threat of death, how do you think you're going to follow Jesus after? You're going, to have, you're going to give your life for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the many are doing it even today, but it'll be on mass, mass uh, uh, scale of when you accept Jesus Christ and you will not, not deny him that they'll kill you and they'll tell your head off. It's in the scripture. All right, so I'll get saved. Just not now. They're listening, but they don't want to act on what's being said. So we're listening and not paying attention. Our life is very unpredictable. Can you predict everything that's going to happen in your life? Have you ever had things seem to happen on warp speed in your life? Everything's run along pretty smooth. You've got a simple drive to the grocery store, then the accident happens. You know, and, and we talked about the accident up here at Norton. It's the other, other day, a guy driving a tractor. Uh, he's doing what they call bobtail. He didn't have a trailer behind his truck. He's on the wrong side of 23 up here. His, his folks head on. It's the end for one. You know, he, he, he's, he's gone because he gets killed in an accident. How many times do we see that happening? Warp speed. You, know, you, can, you can't predict those things. We don't ever know exactly what's going to happen, when it's going to happen, and how it's going to happen. You, put, uh, you have a place on your body that doesn't feel normal. Uh, you go to the doctor, and the next thing you know, they're taking you to surgery. We get to hurry and get there. And I've been there uh, when my dad was leaving. He had bad heart. And uh, we, go, we go to the hospital, he starts having chest pain, they, they do a catheterization, and I'm talking about just in a few hours' time here, we're sitting at the hospital, and they, they go in there and they said, we got to take him to uh, do open heart surgery right now. So, I mean, in just a few minutes' time, it seems like, or warp speed, we're, we're at the hospital doing a catheterization. Next thing we know, he's having bypass surgery. I mean, just bang, just like that right there. And, and we see things like that happen all the time. You speak to someone on the phone or maybe in person, and then you get that call on warp speed, and they think, you know, you're at the funeral home. Right, because the things happen that fast that 
We don't know. We don't know our next minute. We don't know our next hour. We don't know any of those things. So it starts happening very, very quickly, and we've got to deal with it. If we're not listening to the Scripture and what Jesus says, and we're not listening to these things, how are we going to how are we going to survive? But that's why we need to be listening. That's why we need the Word of God. Are we listening to what God said to us? Are we listening to Him? So these things are on warp speed. How much more will this happen when the rapture takes place? How much more of warp speed are we going to see things happen when you think about all these millions of people that are followers of Christ leave here in the moment in the twinkling of an eye? And we've seen all these pictures, and I don't know how this will happen. The airplane and the pilot is Christian, and the rapture happens, and he's gone. There's nobody to fly the plane. How about when going down, you're going down the interstate, and here's all these cars start bang, 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 and they're piling up. Because in half of the cars, there's nobody in them. Because they've been raptured. All these different kinds of things that can happen in the moment of the twinkling of an eye, which is that fast that we, uh, we have the time, like nanoseconds, that that twinkling of an eye actually means. So we're looking at how fast these things can happen. Are we listening? Are we ready to get things set in our life, whether it's right here today, something that could happen, or at the rapture, that we're going, we can handle the warp speed. If we're not listening and we're not looking and we're not paying attention to what God's saying, we're not going to be ready. So if I heard it said many times, you don't rise to the level of the occasion. You hear people say, you know, in ball games, a lot of somebody stepped up and did this, and somebody did that, or we'll rise to the occasion. But that's not what happens. And it's told time and time again, you go to the level of your training, you don't rise because you don't know what to do beyond what you're trained to do. So if we're not putting the Word of God in our heart, we're not listening to God, we're not listening to the things He's trying to tell us, we don't have anything to put out there. You know, you have somebody come to you, you know, you're you not saved, you don't know how to be saved, and you're not studying the Word of God, and somebody comes to you and says, hey, I'd like to be saved, can you help me? How are you going to help them? What are you going to do if you're not there, you're not listening, you're not reading the Word of God, and you're not studying and putting it in your heart, what are you going to do? You're going to be, well, well, I don't know, let me call the preacher. You should be ready to, uh, to speak to your kids, your grandkids, whoever needs to pray, somebody you work with. You need to be ready to pray for these people and pray with these people and lead them to the Lord. You say, well, it scares me to death. It might be a scary thing, but do it anyway. Get the Word of God. I always made the habit, especially when I was youth pastoring and have different kids come in, I would have my Bible marked. Already in Romans 3 and 23, and Romans 6 and 23, and Romans uh, 10, 9 and 10. And let them read the scripture say, don't take my word for it. I want you to see what the scripture says. Here's what the Bible tells you. And that's very, very simple. You can do that and let them read it for themselves. All right, but are you listening? Are you studying? Are you praying for knowledge? God, help me out. I need to understand this. Help me with the knowledge of the Word of God. What level will you be at when things start happening on, well, on warp speed and we start, it starts moving very, very quickly? All right, and, and even at that, we was talking about the different things with accidents and different things. What if you had to pray for somebody and just their life's prayer? I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And the, and the preacher's two hours away. It happens. It happens. People get mid flighted out and you've got all these trips to make. It can happen very quickly. You need to be ready and listen to what God's telling you to be ready to do what He called you to do. All right, we see Jesus taken when He was betrayed by Judas. Peter denied Him three times. Just He's saying that just as Christ told Him He would do. And even the ones who followed Him the closest and said they would die for Him and after Jesus' death. Here's where they were. Luke chapter 23, verse 49. says, But all his acquaintances and the women who followed him from Galilee stood at a distance watching all these things happen. So they didn't want to get up in the middle of it because, you know, they may, you know, they done kill one. They may want to put me up there too. So we're going to back off. We're going to get way over here. And, you know, in that binoculars, even if they'd had them, they'd have probably been somewhere watching. Oh, no, this is what's happening. This is, this is what's taking place. You know, they would have been looking as far away as they could because they didn't want to get caught up in these things. So they were not there to defend him. 
Nobody was there to defend him. If you read the, read the scripture, he was there on his own. They were standing in a place hoping no one would recognize them. Just like Peter, when he denied Christ three times, he, you know, he even, he even got to the point of cursing and said, you know, you're crazy. You're, I, you, know, you don't even know who I am. I'm not one of his followers. And he completely denied him. But they didn't want to be recognized as one of his disciples because they did not listen. Even though he was speaking to them, they were not absorbing what he was telling them. So after the resurrection, the women went to the tomb to find it empty. All right, how many times, as we just read there a few minutes ago, did Jesus say, the Son of Man is going to be lifted up, the Son of Man is going to be crucified, the Son of Man is going to raise again third day, uh, the third day? How many times did he tell them that? Over and over and over. They were distraught because the tomb was empty, even though he had told them multiple, multiple times, I'm going to raise on the third day. So here's what the angel said to them in Luke chapter 24, and starting with verse 5, said, Then, as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? Verse 6 says, He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. So the angels tell him exactly what Jesus had told him time and time and time again. You know, and Peter said, come over here, but let me tell you, that ain't what's going to happen. You know, he takes the disciples off the side of the road and says, Here's, we're going to Jerusalem. Here's what's going to happen. And he explains the whole process to them. Here's exactly what these angels told them. So let's look at verse 8 and 9. It says, They remembered his words, and then they returned from the tomb and told these things to the eleven and to all the rest. And they said, Okay, glory, hallelujah. We're glad. Let us go see that Jesus is risen. All right, verse 10 and 11 says, It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them, who told these things to the apostles, and their words seemed to them like idle tales that they did not believe in. So the most spiritual men, Christ's following men, did not pay attention and were not listening to what God was saying to them and what Jesus spoke to them. I'm going to be delivered up. I'm going to be crucified. I'm going to raise the third day. But it was time and time and time again as we read that he told them this. But then look what it says. It says their words seemed like idle tales and they did not believe them. Even though Christ had, and Christ had never lied to them. He never stretched the truth as we say. Or as my granddad said, he never lied. He just handled the truth a little careless. But Jesus never did that either. He told you the truth, the blunt truth, exactly how everything was. So they heard Jesus tell them multiple times that he would not only be delivered again, but he would be crucified and raised the third day. They heard him, but they didn't listen. Are you listening? Am I listening? Are we hearing what uh, God is trying to tell us? Are we listening to what the Spirit is saying to the church? All right, we can hear everything Jesus said, again, through teachers and preachers and reading the Word, but are we listening? You know, how many times do you ever read anything and you don't have any a clue what you read five minutes later? We're not absorbing it. How many times do you get something on your mind? And I do this all the time. I sit down with a purpose to watch the weather. And I look right at the TV and they're talking to me. I'm not talking to anybody else. And I'm staring at the TV and I could not tell you one thing that they said. I'm not paying attention. I'm not listening. I'm not absorbing it because I'm not, my focus is way somewhere else other than focusing on what I need and what I set down with a purpose to hear. And we do it all the time. So if you're lost and you've not accepted Jesus as your Savior, are you listening up to the things that Jesus said? Are you listening when Jesus said in John 3 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that who, whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Are we listening? And then it says that whoever believes in him, not, it's not just the fact that Jesus died on the cross and he rose again the third day. That's, that it had to be the main focus. That's the recipe. But the rest of the recipe is, it's just like stirring up a cake. And I just thought of this example. You stir up a cake and you put in the eggs and you put in the oil and you put in the, 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 the mince because I've made a few cakes in my time. But you, you put all that stuff in there, but until you put it in the oven, it doesn't really matter. All right, Jesus, Jesus was uh, crucified. He rose again the third day. But until you believe in your heart, you've not left the cake. 
You've mixed it all up and you've got everything in there. But until you give your life to Christ, it doesn't matter. You're not listening. You didn't read the recipe. You're not paying attention. John 14 and 6, are we paying attention? When Jesus said, uh, said to him, said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. Uh, are we, did we pay attention? Uh, do, do we pay attention? Romans 10, 9 and 10, as I mentioned a minute ago, says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God's raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Are we paying attention? John 12 and 48 says, He who rejects me and does not receive my words has that which, has that which judges him. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. So if he didn't receive the word, we didn't receive what God said. Mark 16 and verse 2, or chapter 16 and verse 16. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Are we listening? Are we listening? I'm here to tell you folks, everybody's not going to heaven. I don't care what you read in the paper. There are not multiple ways to get to heaven. There's one way. Jesus said in John 14, 6, He's the way, the truth, and the life. That's the only way you're going to get there. The only way I'm going to get there. The only way anybody throughout time is ever going to get there. Because that's the only way. It's not multiple ways. I don't care who says that. I don't care how famous they are. I don't care if they're a preacher, not a preacher. It doesn't matter. That's not what the Word of God says. There's one way to get there. Are you listening? Are you listening? It's not the way you think. You know, and, and I love to hunt. We talk about hunting all the time and, and different things like that. You are not going to church sitting in a tree stand on Sunday. You, know, you say, oh, it's not a long time with God. Well, you're not, if you've not been saved, I don't care how long you sit in a tree stand. It doesn't matter. You've got to get in, in relationship with Jesus Christ. It's the only way you're going to make it to heaven. It's not going to be, well, I can do it just as good at home. I'm not saying you can't serve God from home, but God intended for you to be part of a congregation of people. He intended for us to be together. That's why he said, assemble yourselves together. Fail not to do that, especially as the end time draws nearer. We need to be together as Christian people. All right, I think COVID has drawn that away, way away from people. I can, I can sit home in my pajamas and everything's good. But we need to pay attention to what God's trying to tell us, and we need to be busy. All right, for those who have given your life to Christ, we need to be busy about the Father's business. We've got to be taking care of things. Romans chapter 12 and 1, he tells us what to do. He says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. All right, verse 2 says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So that's, that's where we need to be, John, or Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. He also told us, says, Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So we need to let our light shine, and he's telling us what we need to do and how we need to present the Christ to the world through us. Are we listening? Are we paying attention to what God's trying to tell us? So when we see things start at warp, warp speed, we don't need to be like the disciples, but we need to remember his words. All right, Luke chapter 21, and verse 25, it says, And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, in the stars, and on the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, and the sea and the waves roaring. Verse 26, And men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Verse 27 and 28, then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with a power and great with power and great glory. And now when these things begin to happen, lift up, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws nigh. So we start seeing these things happen. We start seeing things happen around the world, and you can start seeing all these things taking place, earthquakes in diverse places. We start seeing nations rise against nations. We start seeing all these things happen. He says you need to start paying attention because something's getting ready to happen. Are we listening? Are we listening and paying attention? And the main thing, are we ready? Are we ready for what's coming? Are we ready for what God wants to do in our life? Are we ready to be a best we can use? Are we listening to what he's telling us? And are we ready to move? 
That's what we need to think about. That's what we need to focus on. And we all need it. I need it. You need it. We all need it because we need to be busy. Time's running out. You know, we got people all around us dying lost because we're not busy about what we need to be doing. We're not focusing on the things of God, but everything else is going on. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer today. You know, and pray, pray, you pray with us as we pray this morning. Are you listening? Lord, speak to our hearts. I want to listen. Just like when uh, Samuel, that he came and the Lord spoke to him, and he was just a young boy, and he said, and he would say, Samuel, and Samuel would go in, I believe it was Eli, after he studied this, but he would go into the priest, and he'd say, did you call me? No, I didn't call you. He says, he goes back, and lays down to sleep. Again, same thing happens. He goes back in and said, did you call me? No, I didn't. He said, go back this time and see this, Lord. I'm listening. I'm listening. When the Lord speaks to the heart, He wakes us up in the middle of the night. Can we say, Yes, Lord, I'm listening. I'm your servant. What can I do? What can I do? Let's pray. Father God, we thank you and praise you, Lord, again for this day. Lord, we want to be a listener, Lord, but not only hear your word, but be a doer of your word. And Father, you said in your word that, that, that we need to be a doer, then we will be justified as a doer. And Father, I pray, Lord, right now for the folks that are here. I pray for those that are watching online. Lord, we need to be busy about what you have for us. Lord, we need to pay attention to your word. We need to hear what you're saying. Lord, we don't want to be like the disciples that hear you tell us something over and over and over again. Yet when time comes and things start in warp speed, Lord, we don't remember what you said. We don't remember your word because we've not hid it in our heart. Father, I pray right now, Lord, for each one, Lord, those that are not saved, I pray that you begin to speak to their heart. Lord, they may have heard the gospel all their life, and they may even make that statement, Lord. It says, I've heard this all my life, that this is going to happen, and that's going to happen. But, Lord, we know, it's just as you told the disciples, it's going to happen. And, Father, I pray, Lord, right now for those that are saved, Lord, that we're listening to you. Lord, when you wake us up, Lord, in the middle of the night, Lord, in the, in the middle of the day, Lord, you speak to our hearts, Lord, we would stop what we're doing and say, yes, Lord, I'm listening. I'm listening. Speak to me. Lord, I want to hear what you have to say. And Father, I pray for each one, Lord, for strength in their life, Lord, that is saved. I pray for those that are not saved right now, Lord, as we give them opportunity to do that right now. But Father, I pray, Lord, that you help us to listen to you. Lord, me, all these folks that are here today, all the folks that will be here at 11, Lord, the ones, uh, Lord, that are watching online, Lord, help us to listen to you. And Father, we know Easter soon coming as we celebrate, uh, Lord, uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for that resurrection. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for the blood that was spilled that we could be saved and, and wash our sins away. We thank you for that, Lord. And Father, for those that, that, that may have never heard this, Lord, let them listen today and absorb this in, the, in their life that they can see that they need Jesus Christ as their Savior. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, if you're listening with us today, you're on, on live stream, you've never been saved, you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I ask you right now to pray with us as we pray. We'll ask you to repeat this prayer with us. You feel like the Lord's speaking to your heart. Conviction is on you. Say, oh, I, I feel something, but I don't know what it is. I believe it's the Lord speaking to your heart right now. He's telling you, you need to be saved. Are you listening? Are you paying attention to what he's saying to you? So let's pray, Lord Jesus. I thank you for dying for me. I thank you rose again the third day. Lord, I realize I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. I ask you to come into my life and wash me clean. Forgive me of my sins. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, let somebody know. Uh, tell somebody that I gave my life to Jesus Christ. If you don't have a home church, we'd love to have you here at Journey Church, 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. on Sunday mornings. And, and, and we also do the live stream about 9.15 and also on Wednesday nights at 7 the live stream. So we'd love to have you be with us in the Easter's coming. If you don't have anywhere to go on Easter, you're looking for a church, we'd love to have you here and, uh, and to be with us. And we're doing everything we can, social distance, all those kind of things. So we're, we're ready for you. God's ready for you. Are you listening? Thank you for being with us. Have a good day.